Welcome to my new video. I'm Luca and today I'm going to show you how you can improve your tracks with some basic automation and uh, some mixing. So this is track I built. It's uh, just a simple drop with some with a pad sound. I can show you one sec. Pad sound, some uh, some stabs and a simple sub bass. And all together it sounds like this. And um, after uh, after a while, I add some uh, some shakers to make a small progression in the track. So yeah, this is our track. So the first thing we want to improve is to make the drop in the beginning a little bit bigger. So well, let's start out with making um, the pad sound a little bit less dry. So what uh, we want to do is to select the, um, the sound we want to, uh, to mix. Just click on it and right click on the mixer, channel routing, route select the channels to this track. And what this does, it links uh, the, the sound you have selected to the mixer uh, and the mixer is our is our like main station when uh, where we uh, bind uh, all our uh, sounds to and where we can add some effects to it uh, quite simply so now once we have uh, uh, um, have our sound in the mixer you can see that it's uh, selected here you can see with the sound waves uh, go to it and click on slot 1 and then select uh, Fruity Reverb 2. This is our main reverb uh, plugin and it comes with Fruit Loops so you don't have to worry about not having uh, the plugin. So now we can uh, higher the refraction uh, level and play around with the wetness. The wetness decides how um, how atmospheric our uh, sound uh, will be, how much echo we want on it. So, for example, with maximum wetness, it sounds like this. And with minimum, just a little bit. So, a smart thing here uh, to do would be to automate uh, the wetness before the drop and then lower it on the drop to get that big drop feeling. So, right click on the wetness and click create automation clip. And this goes for everything. Anything you want to automate, right click and create automation clip. So now we have automated the uh, wetness of, uh, of the pad sound. So we can right click around here and it will rise in wetness uh, during the song, before the drop. And here is the drop as you can see with the FX hit. And we can also lower it on the drop, so just right click here. And now we have uh, our simple automation. It sounds like this. Just a small change, it may not sound too different, but it surely fills out the spaces in the track and gives a more euphoric feeling to it. So, what we want to do now is uh, it's to add some filters to it. And this also makes a huge difference uh, before the drop. So, make this two, lower the high pass because we want a low pass filter, and lower the resonance, right click on a cutoff, and create automation clip. You can uh, pause the video if it was too fast. Um, and you can simply lower it in the beginning to make it fade in, kind of. and make it high at the drop and it sounds like this. Yeah. Sounds like that and to make it even better we can um, we can make the cutoff a little bit lower in the drop because I personally think it sounds much better with a lower cutoff at the drop. 
So you can make it high just before and then just lower it on the drop and make it progressive through the track. So after a couple of seconds it will rise and cut off again. So it sounds like this. <laughs> So it's mo more focus on the on the bass and the steps. So just because we're lazy, we can bind the st uh, stab sound to the same channel as the pad. Just because we're lazy, usually you need to uh, bind it to another channel and add the same effects because we simply want uh, yeah the same effects. Uh, on both sounds in this case. You could argue that the filter isn't needed for the stabs, but yeah, it uh, sounds pretty good in this case and <laughs> uh, we can save some time with it. So, what we can do now is to automate the cutoff on our stab. So click on the cutoff one time just to select it, click here and browse parameters and now when we have uh, this list open just right click on the filter CTL cutoff and create an automation clip. So that's the way you create automation clip in plugins. You select, the, um, you click on the part you want to au automate, click browse parameters and just find it in the list here. So now we can start with a low cutoff and then make it high, bef uh, high before the drop and then just lower it down. That's the simple simple thing to do with cutoff, usually. Depends on what you, what you like. And as you can hear uh, the cutoff is is kind of it makes the sounds wider with a higher cutoff and more compact with a smaller cutoff. Uh, so I can show you the sound with a high cutoff and a low cutoff. This is high cutoff and this is low cutoff, and it can be used for yeah uh, building up a track. It's pretty fun uh, to play around with, uh, especially with atmospheric tracks like uh, Tech House and uh, Techno and such. Uh, so yeah, now when we have this, we can uh, add some side chaining finally to our our sounds. So what we want to do is to open a kick, the kick, uh, uh, the kick track, select the kick drum, open the mixer channel with F9. Right click on our first uh, first track in the mixer. I've already done this, so it already says kick. But you click here, channel routing, and route select the channels to this track. And now the kick is bound to a mixer. There's a line between them, so to say. So if we play the kick drum, you can see that it moves ex on this track. And we, if we bind it here, it will move here. So I usually I usually link uh, the kick to the first uh, first the channel in the mixer because it's the foundation of the track and the kick uh, decides the side chaining of all sounds. So I usually make it the first. So now when we hand, uh, have that, we want to side chain the sub bass and uh, our uh, pad sound. So uh, click on the kick and then click on this little arrow uh, beneath the pad sound and this arrow beneath the sub sound. And always remember to lower this guy here because uh, because it messes up the sound of the kick otherwise. So lower that, go to the stab sound, add a limiter, and always make sure the limiter is, is on the top of all the other effects and the filter uh, after the limiter. And open the limiter on the sub bass also. So now when we have uh, two limiters on both sounds, we can uh, side chain it. So go to compression on both, side chain 1, side chain 1, lower the threshold on both, and higher the ratio a bit. And we got a pretty simple side chaining going on uh, with our track. So now it sounds like this. Gives a little bit of bounce to the track. It uh, kind of briefs 
uh, brief us a little bit uh, gives uh, gives the mixing some space. So now the basic part of the out uh, now you know the basics of the automation, um, and this goes for every sound, everything. Always right click and create an automation clip, and you got this uh, this going on. And every track uses automation, so this is a really good tool to use. So uh, now when we have this, uh, we can um, add some EQ to our our pad because you may not hear it, but it has some lower bass sounds, uh, some lower frequencies in it, and those can actually interfere with the kick uh, kick drum and the bass sounds, and we don't want that to happen because it will be too many bass freq uh, frequencies. So the synths have the higher frequencies usually and the bass drums and bass sounds have the lower f uh, frequencies and we don't want those worlds to uh, to crush together because then we had a real uh, have a really bad mix and it will sound kind of uh, messy and noisy so let's go to our our pad sound here and open uh, one slot and select the parametric EQ2 um, and move it beneath the, the filtering. And now when we have that, we can you can see the spectrum of the uh, the uh, frequencies used if you just play the sound. You can see the lower the note, the lower the frequency. And we are around here somewhere, so we can lower the bass frequencies just to let it yeah let the bass uh, breathe a little bit. Just lower it. Now we can experts argue that uh, it matters, I mean, which frequencies you use and such, but I usually just lower it a little bit like this, or sometimes I cut it off uh, completely, but this time I will leave a little bit of uh, bass frequencies. And you can also higher the highs a little bit if you want that uh, little bit punchy um, feeling to the, to the sound. You can have it a little bit more clear, uh, clearness. Something like that. It's a t terrible wave, but it will uh, it will uh, sound good for now. And now it sounds like this. And it's actually a pretty huge improvement from our first version. That sounds like this without uh, any effects. And with the effects So yeah, uh, I hope you learned something ab uh, about automationing and uh, mixer channels and such um, and if you have any questions, make sure to leave them below and I will answer anything. And uh, yeah, I see you guys in the next, uh, next video. Take care.